giving some great feedback on our X3 camper setup video. We made one for packing up the camper during our recent overnight stop at the Goombara section of the Main Range National Park in southern Queensland. Packing up's a little easier if you close all of your compartment doors and lids first, so you're not working around them. We like to pack up the chairs and tables and all the other paraphernalia of a campsite while we still have the benefit of the awning for a bit of shelter, whether that be from the sun or the rain. Normally take some slack off the front end of the awning first. From there, first step is to pull all of the pegs out of the awning guy ropes and poles. If you're on your own, this can be a little bit difficult if it's windy. Luckily, in this spot, it was nice and calm, so I could get all of that preparatory work done first. Then we progressively fold the poles up, working towards the rear. And last of all, take the rear pole out of the trailer socket near the rear entry. So when putting out your awning and to help you pack it up, it's worth having a look at how the hinge works. You can see that when the awning is collapsed, all of the bars of the hinge are in one row and the same at the other end. And you can also see that the rear or right hand end of the awning is also higher than the front. So when we're packing it up, it's really important that we align the awning arms to those hinges. Otherwise, if we get things crossed up, it's going to make it bulky and could even damage the awning arms. So you can see here why it's really important to support your awning arms. You can see that piece of raw aluminium there where the first time I packed it up, I didn't lift this high enough. the awning arms together holding their weight as we go so that they're in a position where we can do the final fold up onto the backboard of the awning. Gives the awning a bit of a shake off to get rid of any tree leaves and dust. to do a bit of a crossover here where we fold the left hand front section inwards and then we fold the right hand rear section back over the top. Make sure that your support loop is already nice and open so you can get it over the end of the awning and then pull the cam lock up nice and tight pushing the awning up as you go to keep it nice and high. You'll see here that the left hand or front awning arms have sagged down. We need to make sure that we keep these pushed up nice and high as we support the awning and do the Velcro straps. If we don't keep that up nice and high, it gets really difficult to do the cover up at the very end. Tease out the awning fabric so that it isn't folded over itself and then start to roll it. I prefer to do a big fold first and then start rolling just tends to distribute the fabric a bit better so that I can zip the final cover on that little bit easier. I prefer to get the middle strap on first and again focus on keeping the awning nice and high. That enables me to get the rear strap done up and really concentrate on getting those awning arms pulled up tight. Now we can slip the cover onto the awning and get it ready for final pack up. If you've done a good job of rolling the awning up nice and tight, 
you should be able to do the zipper up nice and easily. You may have seen the tip that I put up on Facebook a little while ago showing how by turning around a couple of the factory installed bolts it makes it easier to get the zipper past the corners at each end. And we'll make a start on the tent. Just like the awning, we want to shake off any leaves and dust that might have settled on top of the tent and go around undoing the loops and stud clips that hold the tent onto the body of the camper. So now we've got the inside of the tent ready for pack up. You can see that we've got the elastic cords that pull the tent in. We find it's easy to leave all of the windows open and to drape the canvas below the arms. That way the window flaps aren't fouling the uh, tent support frames and stopping them from collapsing down. Something else that's really important is we find to put the pillows, if you carry them in the camper, in the middle of the mattress. That way when the camper folds over, they end up sitting in this void rather than jamming on top of the shelves or over on top of the fridge. The other thing that's important to note is that there's quite a lot of room in between the end of the mattress here. Now that's important when you're packing up because that's somewhere that you can tuck all of your excess canvas. I'll show you when we get there, but rather than trying to poke the canvas directly into the camper, better off trying to poke it up into this void, which will end up being, of course, upside down when you're packing things up. Next, we drop the tent support frames and get everything ready to flip the lid across. All right, heave ho. It's definitely not an easy job to do on your own. Our camper's gas struts have definitely got slacker over the five or six months that we've had it. We also carry a bit of extra weight. Our mattress topper is quite heavy, and you'll see that I've got some max tracks and a small roof rack on the exo rack. Next is to work around tucking in all of the canvas, particularly in near the hinge point. It uh, can be quite difficult to get that canvas in and you may even have to open the lid again to work it in. As I mentioned before, you need to focus on pushing your canvas up into the hard lid rather than just pushing it in against the poles. When it comes to closing the lid, everybody seems to have their own way about it. Sometimes I can just hang off the lid and that's enough weight to get the latch started. But here's a few other examples that people have come up with. At the end of the day, I usually just climb up on top of the camper because I've usually got some gear to tie into the roof rack while I'm up there. After you have the latches started, it's time to go around and do one more canvas check. I sometimes use a plastic spatula which can be handy to get into that tight little gap to tuck everything in.
once everything is latched down tight, you can drop your awning ready for transport. From here, normally go around and do a final pickup, whether it be water bottles and hoses, pegs and straps, get the gear thrown up on top of the roof rack, and generally get the campus set up ready to hitch onto the car. step is to raise the stabiliser leg, level the suspension and raise the jockey wheel ready to hitch onto the back of the tow vehicle. Hooking to the tow vehicle is reverse of how we dropped it off. Safety chains, electric cables, and finally the stone stomper. And that's us done. Hopefully you found this video useful. As mentioned, I didn't want to go into too much detail, so if you have any questions, please throw them into the comment section below this on YouTube or on the Patriot Campus Owners official group on Facebook. See you out on the track.